All right. Now, I hit my buddy Kevin Bird. Kevin's a great street rider, hot rider, engine builder, and an engineer. Thanks for coming by to help me. Hey, anything I can do to help? You know, I'm not going to get anything out of him. He's fabulous. I, I noticed you know? that, yeah. All right, what we've got here is we've got a small block Chevy engine. This is the short block all built, and we've done everything to this we need to. Yeah, we've got all the machining done. We've got new bearings in, both the rods and the mains. We've got new bolts, new uh, reconditioned rods, new pistons, rings, you name it. Right. And obviously, we've got the short block built, and we're ready for the next steps. Right, we installed the cam. If the next thing you want to do is start dialing in your cam, you need to find top dead center. While you're playing on the engine, I'm going to go build the rest of the car. <laughs> All right, go for it. Make it a nice one, will you? So we'll rotate the engine around so we can see. We've got, this is the number one cylinder in the Chevrolet. It's on the left bank. So what we'll need, we need to do is put some tools on here, and we'll go ahead and find out exactly where top dead center is. Because when the piston's at the top, it doesn't necessarily mean the crankshaft's in the right place, right? Well, you've got to get the relationship of exactly where top dead center is on the crank and where the piston is to the camshaft. And right. so you're going to need a couple simple tools. You know, actually, the crankshaft turns a little bit without the piston moving. We'll show you how that works here in a minute. And that's why you need some tools. We'll put our degree wheel on, and then we'll put a piston stop on. Yeah, that's tight, buddy. It's on the key. The piston stop is just a little bar like this that bolts across the top of the uh, cylinder. Tighten this down, and you've got a little stop there you can adjust. And all we'll do is we'll gently bring the um, piston up against that stop. There we go. All right, you gonna wrench that side and help me tighten this down? So what we'll do is we'll tighten this down gently. It's just a piece of aluminum with a stud in it. All right, now we'll take our ratchet. You wanna do the honors? Yeah, when we got a pointer that you made, we can put that pretty much anywhere we want because it's just a reference point. Right. And a coat hanger works just fine. And it can go anywhere because you're right, it is a reference point. Thanks, I almost forgot I pointed. That would have been fun. Okay. I'm just putting in a timing cover bolt in here where the uh, front cover would bolt on. And again, just a little wire I made using a piece of coat hanger. It doesn't, you can use welding rod, anything, just to make it stiff so it won't flop around on you. Got it where you want it? That good? Yep. That's good. All you want is something that's not going to move around. Perfect. Now, well, we got our piston stop here. And we're going to go ahead and bring our piston up against the stop slowly. You'll know when it hits. Bang. You'll know when it hits, but you want to do it slowly because you can actually break things if you're not careful. You've got a lot of torque on this ratchet. Right. So we're at the top, touching our piston stop. And what Kevin's going to do is degree the wheel to zero. All the way around, around, and around. Put it at zero. This is an arbitrary number because we're actually going to find somewhere between here. But this helps my math. Now I don't have to add anything to zero and the next number. So I'm going to... You're an engineer. You're supposed to be good at math. That's what Fuller told me. Go ahead. Go we get good at avoiding as much math as possible. Anyway, bring the piston back up and change direction. Kevin will feel it. Stop. There we go. Okay. And what are we at? We're at uh, 37 degrees? Yep. 37 degrees. Okay. So Which we'll divide 37? by two. You want a calculator? Yes, I do. Okay. That's 18 and a half. And we'll... Yeah, I'll agree with you on that one. There you go, all right. So we can yeah. take our piston stop off. All right. All right, go for it. Now, if we get it right back at about 18 and a half, we should okay. be right at TDC. Now, you gotta come back some more. Oops. There you go, there you go. There go. All right, now, here's the interesting thing. Piston's the top dead center. We've got the crankshaft exactly where we want it. Now, turn the crankshaft. We'll show how many degrees it'll rotate before the piston moves. Go ahead. It just started to move. Yep. All right. And you can see that's one way. That's about uh, that's six a good, degrees. Yeah, at least. Almost 10 degrees. And if you go the other way, that's another six, 12, 14 degrees. The crankshaft turns where the piston doesn't move up and down because there's a connecting rod changing over the top of the pin. That's why it's so important to go through this process so you find the exact number. All right. Now we can put the cam Let's where Let's set it to the top dead. Okay. And we're going to do this again, double check it when we go to the cam. There you go. All right. Now the next step is... What we need to do is we need to install our crankshaft timing chain sprocket. And there's a right way and a wrong way to do that. You can drive it on, mm. not the right way. So we're going to show you when we get back. Right now we need to take a break, stick around. We've got a lot more to do on our valve train. All right, welcome back. Now, what we selected for timing components for this engine is what they call a hex adjust system, where we go ahead, this is going to mount here on the crankshaft, and this is going to go on the camshaft. What we can do is we can go ahead and adjust this was we dial our cam in. I happen to like these. It's a nice setup, makes it nice and easy. But first thing we need to do is install what's called the crankshaft sprocket. It's not a gear, it's a sprocket because it runs on a chain. If you look in here, there's a chamfer right there, and that's going to go up against a chamfer on the end of the crankshaft, 
And if you just take and slide this on, make sure there's no burrs, put a little lube on it, some anti-seize, whatever you like, but put something there. And a lot of guys will slide it down. It's got about a quarter of an inch to go yet. Real tempting to get a, even a brass punch, drive it on, and that's great. Except you're up against a radius, you put a lot of stresses on that gear. You'll never see a really good engine build to drive one of those on. He'll take his crankshaft harmonic balancer installing tool, which has a bearing on it. And of course, this little sleeve that goes in here. You screw that into the end of the crankshaft. Now this particular crank has a 7 16 20 thread. Put your adapter in there. Once that's bottomed out, you, you line this up. And just take your wrench and just drive it on, just like you do a harmonic balancer. Once I get this on, we'll be ready to get our cylinder heads put together so we can drop the heads on. Then it's time for lifters, push rods, roller rockers, and dialing in the cam. All right, we've got the assembly of our cylinder head going real nice. We're putting our valve stem seals in. And as you can see, I've got a great little handy tool to keep from mangling the thing. It sits on the shoulder like this. You can actually press it in nice and easy. Otherwise, if you try to press it on the top, you'll ruin the edge there, you'll get premature wear, you'll soak oil into the cylinder, you'll burn it. It's a bad thing on a brand new engine. Yeah, and you got a nice seal like that and you can damage it. And the tools are pretty cheap. And a lot of times people say, you got every tool there is, but you know, if you're gonna do some of this work, some of these tools are absolutely necessary. You gotta do it right if you're gonna do it at all. And again, we're doing a budget build here. This is not a super high performance motor. We're using the cast iron heads. Now, originally these heads had pressed in studs from the factory. Yeah, the pressed studs work well with a real small cam. As you start to build more cam lift and more spring pressures, you want to upgrade. Pull the studs out, machine these for a screw-in stud and a guide plate. Yep, and a good machine shop can do it right there in the valve table because everything's perpendicular and straight, so they can do a nice job in the stud, the uh, guide plates to keep the rock around, push rods in, straight in place. Now, another thing we did was we put all new valves in it. You know, putting all new bolts, a lot of new components. There's no sense going back with old valves. And again, nothing special about these valves, just nice new valves. New springs, you know, nothing will kill horsepower more than a weak valve spring. Oh, and they fatigue. They got a lot of motion in them. They'll fatigue over time. They'll break. You will lose, lose a whole engine that way. Oh, yeah. You talk to the sprint car guys, two races, and they change all the valve springs. They have so much vibration in those engines that just kills the valve springs. So if you step up to, like, bigger heads with better airflow, and you get them on a bench and stuff, again, it's breathing. You want bigger valves, and, of course, you're going to need better springs. Absolutely. With, with the money you're going to put into a good set of cylinder heads to get the flow, you want to make the valve upgrade as well. Yep. These are from Scorpion Racing Products. Now, these are nice valves. This premium stainless like this intake valve right here. That's a pretty good size. That's a uh, 21 4N stainless. This is a 23 8N stainless. This is next to Inconel. They're yes. really neat. Look how they're built. Well, the exhaust seems a whole lot more temperature than the intake side does. Right. So, you know, stepping up the material on the exhaust side, even greater than the intake, is a, a really smart idea. Yeah, and look at the swirl polish, back cut. This is a top shelf valve. Now, if you go ahead and modify a set of heads to accept valves like this, you're going to need an aggressive cam, of course. You're also going to need some serious valve springs. Oh, yeah, and you can see the difference between these high-performance springs and these stockers. Yep, and of course, you know, this, this high-performance spring, that won't just bolt on there. You can see you've got to machine this. Make sure they're a bigger diameter. Of course, these are the best uh, springs many can buy. They got all kinds of neat products in them, neat steel. The deal is that you also got to check them for coil bind, which means the valve springs like that. It's compressed a little bit when it's in place. When the rock around pushes the valve down, if it pushes it down too far and these coils bind, then you're going to break parts. Absolutely, and it's all based on your cam lift. Right. So if we were going to bigger valves and springs, that's what we do. Of course, we're going to use Scorpion Racing Products push rods, their lifters. They're roller, roller rocker arms, all kinds of neat stuff. We're going to go ahead and put this head together. Once the head's finished, we'll put them both on the engine. And we can dial in our cam. Right now, we need to take a break, so don't go away. I'll get this wrapped up. I'll meet you over at the short block. Get it right where you want it? Yeah, we got it right at TDC. Welcome back. Well, we're building this engine with the help of my buddy Kevin Bird, a great engine builder, hot rod, or an engineer. I appreciate, again, you being here. What we're doing is now we're getting ready to dial our cam in now that the cylinder heads are on. Yeah, so we used a different method, basically the same approach we found a little bit before TDC, a little bit after TDC, but you used a different tool, right? With the heads on, you can't use that piston stop like we had, so we use this type here, screws into the spark plug hole, do the same thing. Roll up till it stops, touches the piston stop, mark it, go back, divide it, and you got top, top dead center. Works really well. So we've got our wheel set to zero to match the actual piston position. Right. We've got our valve train laid in, and now we can start to find 
the center line of the camshaft. That's right. And that's real important to check it. Make sure you don't have manufacturing tolerances stocking, you know, stacking up against you. Again, we're using hydraulic lifters, but for testing, we've got a mechanical lifter in here. We've got our nice push rod and our Scorpion roller rocker arm. We're going to rotate the engine and watch the dial indicator. When it starts changing direction, we've gone past the top of the lobe. Right there. Okay, hold it. Go back just a shade. So then what we want to do is we're at the top of the lobe. This is called the intake center line method. We'll zero our indicator. Then we'll roll it back 100 thousandths. Yeah, and the reason for the 100 thousandths or a little bit more is you've got a tight side of the chain and you've got a slack side of the chain. Now you're rotating the crankshaft backwards, you're slacking the wrong way. So you want to overcompensate, get everything tight, pull it back up so at 50 thousandths before the lift, everything's exactly the way it's going to be as it's running. Right, so we'll roll it up to 50 thousandths, we'll mark our degree wheel, then we'll continue in the same direction till it's 50 thousandths past, mark our degree wheel, again, split the difference. And that should be to write the same numbers on our cam card, know exactly where we are. Man, you guys are intense over here today. Did you like that? Yeah, you need anything? Uh, how you Got doing with that? Did you brush off all your shavings before you came over here? I'm glad you're working back there and not making anything dust welded? here. welded? Cut? Fab? Good? And a good way to, <laughs> thanks bud, a good way to build power is to put some rocker arms on, nice rocker arms. These are from Scorpion Performance. These things are really nice. Now, if you look at them, they're micro polished. They're really nice finish on them. They look like they're Art chrome. anodized. Yeah, they're clear anodized. They'll give you good wear. And of course, not going to let anything build up on them. They've got a roller fulcrum. They've got a roller tip. Now, these things will stand 950 inches of cam lift. They're good for that. That is a huge amount of lift. And 950 PSI open valve spring pressure. I think you can make a lot of performance with an arm like that. Oh, yeah, you could do that. And they're the best lift. These are the best rock arms you can buy. They're really nice. And I've got to tell you that that 1.6 over the 1.5 stamped ones from the uh, factory, which if their geometry is all over the board, but adding, going from 1.5 to 1.6, we get 35 thousandths more lift. It's gonna be more air, more performance in the cylinder, and because these are accurate, we're gonna get an even uniform opening and closing of all our valves, and the engine's gonna run a whole lot better. Right, and that's the whole idea of having the uh, threaded studs and so on. Now the push rods we're using, again, from Scorpion, these are really nice push rods. Look at how well made they are. That's a salt bath nitride finish on it, 20,000 stick. Very nice. They're really hard. And these are made out of 4135 seamless chrome moly, 180,000 PSI tensile strength. I don't think we're gonna mess with those. Right, I and mean, you have to figure, when you start clipping blocks, decking them, clipping the heads and so on, you need to figure push rod length. They make adjustable length push rods and uh, Scorpion Performance, they can go ahead and make the rods any length you need them. They really exactly. do a great job. So makes a nice valve train. All right, now we'll go ahead and dial our cam in. Then we can put the rest of our lifters in, the rockers, the push rods, and we can adjust the valves. Sounds great. I think we can knock that out pretty quickly. Yep. These are all tight. You all set? All set. Ready to move on. Welcome back. Well, Kevin and I have got all the lifters, push rods, and the roller rocker arms in. Give me a tip on installing these lifters. Well, when you're putting a flat tappet cam, uh, when you're installing the lifters, make sure you put assembly lube on the bottom of the tappet. Now, we did get it on the lobe, so now we got it on both surfaces. But use regular oil on the outside before you drop them in the lifter bores. Without a doubt. Now, these are really nice lifters. And these lifters, first, if they're made here in America, were really good metal. You know, and the, the steel here, the way these things are cast and machined and heated, this is the same as the old NASCAR Spec 3. If you yep. had to live in a cup engine, you know it's going to live really, Absolutely. really well. And, you know, a lot of guys are wearing out flat tappet cams now, and they're blaming the oils and other things. But, you know, a lot of it's just offshore cheap lifters. Yes. You know, these lifters are made right here in America, like I said, and these are basically the same as the billet tool steel racing lifters, a quarter of the price, but they're compatible with the cam to work good in the street. And also on the surface here, it has the highest content of acicular carbide of any lifter made. You Super know? hard, great wearing surface. Yeah, and also make, they make nice roller lifters, and you can see this, these Scorpion rollers, they're real high quality, they'll work great in a big performance mode if you've got a roller cam. All right, let's show them how to adjust the valves here. Okay, first thing you want to do is make sure you're on the base circle. Uh, on a small duration cam, a lot of times you can set on TDC, adjust four intakes, four exhausts, rotate it around, do the opposites. Right. But make sure if you're using a big duration cam, you really pay attention and you're watching your valve trend, you're on your base circle. Make sure when you run your nut down, you can do it by hand, just when the push rod starts to have a little bit of friction to it, grab your wrench, give it another half turn, and you're going to drive that plunger in about half its travel. Now you're on the hydraulic circuit. Make sure you lock it down and you're good to go. Right. If you do it on all the lifters, do it right. Then when you fire the engine up, you can get it right up to speed and then break in your cam right. And we didn't cheat on this thing at all. You know, we put all this nice stuff. Now the head bolts and the rod main, the main cap bolts, 
Those are all from GM Performance. Even the head bolts came with the sealer on them. Okay. High quality stuff. Absolutely. It's the only way to go. Now, when you put all these nice high, high performance rocker arms and these big nuts, the valve covers don't fit anymore. They're too short. Gets a little bit taller, but I think we've got a good solution for that. Well, we did. Super cool. Super Keep a nice cool. nostalgia look. We went to PML and we got these polished aluminum cast valve covers. They really got a great look. Those are nice. You working away, buddy? Yeah. All right. Now, we're also not going to trust this engine to an old balancer. So, uh, from Powerbond, we got a brand new harmonic balancer. We're not going to have any problem with the ring coming loose. These are SFI certified, and we're going to not take a chance. Stage 8 fasteners, locking fasteners, sent us an engine bolt kit, so we'll be able to bolt this thing in. Last thing you want is a damper coming off, taking the front end out of your car. It's going to be great stuff. And you know, Scorpion makes all of this stuff. They also make billet fuel rails and billet throttle bodies for injection. Ooh. They got you covered. Man, those are nice. Yeah. Don't forget, I'll meet you in the break room. Okay. Did you say work? Because I think Brian disappeared again. When you say work, that's what he does. 